Welcome to New Jump City, everybody, where we recap the week in American and Japanese sequential art. I am your host, Christian, the unbiased king. Espinal, the soundboard is back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> also joining us, it is uh, the man, the myth, the legend. It is Joshua Gangsta Time Co. It's called Partner, but it should be called Gangsta Time. Yeah, I got that timing back, but the drop has been a little minute uh, since you heard that. Oh, yeah. And since I heard that, too. Yeah. Um, what's up, everybody listening? You know I'm glad to be here. We got a special little episode. Oh, yeah. Also joining us, it is our producer. It is the fucking edgelord. Big news, Brian. Nan to you, big news. What's up, nerds? Hey, hey, hey. All righty. Uh, jump is off. Uh, so we are going through uh, our monthly chapters this week. Uh, you know, Boruto, uh, Dragon Ball Super, Chainsaw Man, because it came out last week. So we're going to get into all three of those series. Plus, we're going to take a, a couple of questions, catch up on our fucking backlog. Um, I think we're coming up on the end of our backlog. So, you know, you know what to do. Uh, I'll get into it later. Uh, let's not waste any time, though. Uh, let's get directly into plugs. Uh, you can find me at the Chris Espinal on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and also, I have another podcast, a comedy podcast called The Shweekly. Uh, check it out. It's on pretty much everywhere you can listen to podcasts. Uh, we've just finished our first season, so there's 10 episodes in total to listen to. And I think the entire season uh, adds up to about two hours. <laughs> so it's basically the uh, average length of this podcast the whole season. So why don't you go? L-O-L. Over yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So go over and check it out. Uh, that's the Shweekly. It's on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's pretty much audio only. So uh, I hope you guys uh, find it and uh, enjoy it. Uh, Josh, where can they find you? At JD Cole underscore 37. That's on Instagram and at New Jump City Josh on Twitter. Good at me, guys. Um, I'm private. So you guys send that request. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian? ESP on both Instagram and Twitter. And if you ever want to catch me when I'm streaming, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Hell yeah. Uh, you can follow the show itself at New Jump City on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I'm going to try to find little ways to make like little content and stuff for that. It's uh, just been, I just got freed up from doing uh, the other pod, so I have a little bit more free time on my hands. So look out for all that stuff on our Instagram, TikTok, at New Jump City. Uh, do all that. Uh, you can email us at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com with any questions, suggestions, anything you guys want us to talk about. Uh, like I said earlier, we are uh, coming up uh, on catching up on our backlog here. Uh, I think we got maybe one or two emails left to catch up on. So, um, yeah, please send more questions if you're out there and you're listening. Uh, that would be super cool. And we'll get to them uh, when we have a week like this, honestly, where... Uh, there aren't uh, a bunch of series to cover at one time. Uh, so email us there or please comment under uh, the YouTube videos that we put up. Uh, I have, uh, since the last episode uh, dropped, I've been putting up all of the backlogged episodes that, uh, that I wasn't able to upload to YouTube until now. They're all slowly being uploaded every day. Uh, I think we're just one more episode behind i think tomorrow tomorrow should be last week's episode and the day after that will be this episode and they'll all hit it on youtube at the same time uh, i was i did it that way just to kind of like uh, uh just give the uh, algorithm a little bit of a jump start to show that we're still uploading and stuff but hey uh, our youtube is for the most part back it's still audio only uh for for the time being i'm still working on getting a new computer um so until that comes uh, i'll be uploading the episodes as they come and yeah please subscribe there like share comment uh it'll be a lot of fun and uh we do the uh youtube really good chapter of the week poll on there on youtube uh just uh it, it allows for more freedom with, uh, with the poll in general the twitter does so uh, check us out on that. Uh, vote for your favorite series. Uh, I didn't. I, I don't do it for the monthlies usually, but uh, I might start next month, honestly, uh, when we have World Trigger back, because I don't think World Trigger's coming out this month in May. 
Uh, so yeah, check it out. But you know, we usually do the weekly series up there. You get to pick your favorite series, and we announce the winner on the show. So hit it up, vote, subscribe, all that stuff. And um, yeah, without further ado, I think we're getting uh, we're ready to get into the show. Chainsaw Man. This is Chainsaw Man, Chapter 128, Main Dish. Uh, last we left off with Chainsaw Man, uh, Chainsaw Man had just arrived onto the scene and has been fighting the Falling Devil. Uh, he took a little bit of an L, but uh, he was revived uh, thanks to a mystery person uh, rescuing him with their blood. Uh, and he is back in the co in combat. Uh, he managed to save Asa, who was just in the middle of just letting go and uh, flying up to hell where the falling devil has been trying to capture her. Um, but uh, Denji was able to come in and swoop in in the last minute and uh, give her a little bit of a pep talk. So because, uh, of course, the falling devil's attack, you know, the, the just the falling upward into a door to hell uh, is basically based on whether you fall into uh, hopelessness at the sight of your own fucking trauma. And uh, Asa was just kind of giving in. So Denji has been trying to uh, convince her to stay and, you know, to not to not just give up. Uh, and his reason for, he used his example for why he's keeping going. And it is, of course, uh, to get laid. Uh, he just... He just wants to have sex. Yes, sir. And that was really the last panel. Honestly, one of my favorite last pages of all time. Uh, and, that, and we pretty much pick up exactly where we left off uh, with Asa's reaction to what he said. And she's, of course, just like, gross, you're a fucking creep. He's like, I, never mind. I changed my mind. I'm going to hell. And uh, <laughs> honestly, one of my favorite things is I could ju I just read it in this voice when I first read it. And he's like, huh? It's not gross. Sex is like super beautiful, you know, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, <laughs> sex is like super beautiful, man. Uh, and he's like, think about it. Humanity grew to this size because sex feels so damn good. But we're both here now because of the power of sex. And uh, Asa is, of course, like people only have sex because they have nothing better to do. Like somebody else's saliva and sweat mixing together with all yours. That's just gross. He's like, no, that's fucking awesome. And they just keep arguing about it, about how it's fucking cool. And then Asa just like takes a minute to think to herself. He's like, wait, what makes you think you would ever get any? And he's like, huh? I mean, even I can't right now. When I'm older, I'll eventually get a girlfriend. And and then and she's like, are you for real? And then she's just, you she just shouts at the top of her lungs. It's like, no woman in existence would want to have sex with a guy with a chainsaw sticking out of his head. And then she doesn't know that as a fact. Yeah. She and, can't say shit like that. No, but I mean it this revelation has immediately seemed to have caused Denji to give up on life. And <laughs> they both careen towards the doorway to hell. And uh yeah, they end up there. Uh they go beyond the door and they end up on a giant plate uh with a sing sim with a single human head uh some garnish i guess some weird guts garnish guts and apples garnish with no this little squiggly line thing that uh i can't i can't i guess it's blood Julian. it's it's definitely blood but you know it looks like one of them fancy uh yeah, sauces. Like sauce yeah. yeah uh and uh, then she just gets up picks up asa and starts heading towards the door uh, but as he's running, he's just taking hits from that weird worm fucking devil that has been that we saw last time. I think it's the same devil. I don't remember this thing. I, oh, it might not I, be. I may be thinking about another devil because I remember we saw a giant weird worm devil, and I I don't think it's this guy. Well, then yeah, I don't know. It's not this person. Not this thing. Not not this. Not this. It fucked Denji up real proper though. Yeah, it beheads Denji. Come up real nice. Yeah, it beheads Denji, but Denji grabs his head out of midair, just plucks it back on, and uh, revs his engine again. And he got. I guess he just keeps moving <laughs> until he reaches the door, uh, and he opens the door, and who else is there but the falling devil? Uh, the, like, what did you think? I was just going, that's it? <laughs> you made it? Oh, like, we're just, 
Nasdaq, no, yeah, it's over. Yeah, I'm on. I got out. Mm-hmm. Ooh, close one. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Good job, fuck nuts. <laughs> and uh, so basically, uh, the falling devil comes in and she says that the the main dish does not call for Chainsaw Man. And he she commands him to leave uh, Asa and he'll send him. Uh, she'll send him back. And I guess Asa That's just really re- nice of her. It is. It is the most reasonable a devil has ever been. Top the- five. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Genji takes a look at Asa's ass. And then he just like looks. T- he, lo- he just like looks ahead again. And he's like, can I at least bring her ass with me? <laughs> <laughs> like That's insane. You're a crazy person, Denji. And uh, the falling devil is just like pervert. And uh, as I guess the falling devil is about to do something, but then they get taken from behind with a chainsaw through their chest that is not Denji's. Uh, and uh, as her head is just flopping around, she's like, oh dear, this keeps happening to me today. And uh, it does. Yeah, her head gets lopped in half. And uh, we hear a voice coming from the other side of the door saying that the falling devil has no f- tolerance for diners who leave their food unfinished. They'll desperately try to devour Asa Mitaka lest they be killed by the falling devil. And uh, we we get a big full page spread of who this is. And uh, we see that the falling devil is perched on these, this chainsaw that seems to be attached to the face of this mystery person. And it tells the uh, chainsaw man to please evade them until sunrise. And uh, I guess this is the fake saw man. Yeah, this is this is this guys. Everyone listening, this was the moment that Christian and Brian's brain fucking exploded. <laughs> I mean, like a like, like like a mine in the ocean. Yeah, I mean, all I can find myself asking is, what does that mean? Uh, yeah. So I I can't hey. really. Uh, but Josh, uh, what did you think about uh, Chainsaw Man chapter 128? Um, I'm highly intrigued by this mystery fake saw man. Um, I'm trying desperately to think, are there other tools that are similar in shape to a chainsaw, but not quite a chainsaw, like a hacksaw maybe? or I don't know. Hacksaw man? It's not, it's not just another chainsaw guy. It's not. No. Maybe it's a devil that copies something. The, That's what I was the, thinking. Copy what I love, devil, and he <laughs> loves chainsaws. Chainsaw man, so it turns to chainsaw. The mirror devil. It's one of those. It's not a chainsaw man to chainsaw man protege. Chainsaw man's little bro. Yeah. Chainsaw man. Chainsaw junior. man spawn. Anything. Ch- chainsaw boy. Mm. I don't know. Chainsaw. Chainsaw woman. Yeah, chainsaw lad. Chainsaw lass. <laughs> None of that. Chainsaw Anything girl. else to add to the fray, Brian? I was really hoping we were going to see Lawnmower Man. Mm. But I guess uh, Fake Saw Man will do. Fake Saw Man will do. Well, anyway. Um, yeah, as interesting as that was, I'll tell you, like this this chapter was actually pretty short. Not like in actually in pages, too. But in content of what actually happened. Because not much happened. Uh, but it was a great laugh from... I guess from how it went from like him actually really trying to inspire Asa to her getting caught up in the details. That's, you know, that's kind of just how shit works and they are kids, I guess. So, you know, I I expect a child to be distracted by something like that, but regardless, a good technique by the author to shift the mood as per usual, Uh, you know, had to bring attention to that. I, I still don't understand the fall of devil. What do you mean? Actually, I do. They explained it already. I'm, I'm tweeting, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I guess I don't, I, I don't really have that much more to say. It was a short and, 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 and cool chapter. Uh, I guess we could talk about theories about who this fake saw man is after we all talk. So, Brian, any general thoughts for this chapter? Anything that stuck out? Uh, No, I had really similar thoughts to you on this chapter. I don't really have much to really say about it. I feel like there's stuff to analyze, but there's nothing coming to my mind right now. How yeah. about you, Chris? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a very short chapter. Um, and uh, I, I really loved the beginning of it. I thought, <laughs> I mean... 
he's just such a good writer of dialogue and stuff. And I could just like see this playing out in my head. Like I get, the characters are almost moving in a way. Um, like I love how he uses like these panels for pausing and for like people, you can like watch people process things. Um, I really fucking love this series so much. It's so fucking funny. Um, I guess they're technically in hell right now, which is interesting. I'm what one thing. That's kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering that if they're going to meet the blood devil here. Oh, I don't think it's this chainsaw, this fake saw. You think he's going to run through hell? You think they're going to stay in hell? I don't know. Because I don't know if they're even technically there yet. Like, where was that door leading them? Well, I would assume the door was going to lead them back outside. I think the falling devil mentioned that it, it takes them to hell. But, um... I know, I think the door that they went through, they're already in hell, when, where, where they was with that weird nasty creature and the plate. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I, I mean, that's what I'm assuming, because I remember them saying, the falling devil saying that it it is a it's door to hell. Like, the whole point of this is to take Asa to hell so that she could feed... Uh, her to other devils, I guess. Yeah, something like that. It wasn't really specified why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She keeps saying Asa. She's not saying anything about Soru or whatever the word devil's name is. Yeah, Yorozu. Um, Yorozu. Yeah, I don't think... I don't know, man. I, I can imagine that she's probably after the war devil. Not my Yoku. Your Yoku. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I, I honestly I don't have uh the completed soundboard yet, otherwise I would have thrown the yeah one out for you. Thanks. But I don't ha- you're gonna have to deal with uh, my little recreation there. Um Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I don't I also don't have all that much to say. I just thought it was a fucking fun read overall. Yeah. Um so yeah, we could keep it Nice and simple. I I, w- I wish uh, I hope it's just like I'm not smart enough for this series, <laughs> but you know <laughs> this is a shorter chapter. I don't want to admit it, but I that's how I feel. <laughs> Sometimes I when I'm reading Chainsaw Man, I definitely feel like man, I'm not smart enough or of large enough mind yeah. to absorb. I, I what's don't happening. particularly care to admit it, but I don't care. I don't feel that bad about it that I need to go research what things can possibly mean. I'm I'm willing to just wait for a YouTube video to drop. You know what? I'm. I feel like we're good enough. I feel like once we have more information, we'll be able to make some more, uh, uh, uh definitive judgments about what's going on here. But um, sure. You know, I think we've been okay at uh, dissecting Chainsaw Man before. This is just a shorter chapter and a very <laughs> funny one at that. Not like hiding in public. No. That dude. <laughs> that guy's great. Shout out to him. That's the name of the YouTube channel, guys. Hiding in public. Look up him. And Chainsaw Man. Really, you could look up all his videos. They're all pretty good. Yeah. He's got some about Jujutsu Kaisen, too, I think. I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, his Death Note videos are pretty good. But mm. anyway, that's. Uh, I guess that's all I got to say about Chainsaw Man. Uh, are we uh, ready to move onward then? You're correct. Then let's. Oh boy. Let's uh, go. Boruto. This is Boruto chapter 80. What dad would do. Um, last we left off, Ada did a whole big uh, metaphysical switcheroo uh, and uh, convinced everybody that Boruto is Kawaki and Kawaki is Boruto in the sense that Kawaki is the true son of Naruto and uh, Boruto is just a, a weird Otsutsuki child. That bore that Naruto adopted, um. So the whole village is basically after Boruto at this point. Um, Ada is like kind of taken aback by how what she's done at this point because I don't think she even knew this was possible. She did this basically by accident, and it just worked out for Kawaki. Um, the village was already kind of on the hunt for Kawaki, so this switching of uh, of places. Uh, in a reality sense, is is pretty bad for Boruto right now, as the entire village is now hunting after him. Uh, and we cut back. We start this chapter with 
Shikamaru uh, asking Ada if she's sure that she saw Boruto kill Naruto. And uh, Ada is like grasped by Kawaki. And uh, she answers that, yeah, yep, he was he was definitely killed by Boruto. And um, Kawaki lets her go. He's like, good. Um, so basically, um, Shikomaru puts out the call uh, as Sarada listens on, uh, trying to hold back Mitsuki from going after Boruto. Uh, he announces to all of these ninja that uh, Boruto is a potential murderer of Naruto. Uh, the science girl, uh, whose name I forget sometimes, uh, she she is also unaffected by uh, by Ada's attacks, just like Sarada is. Because and she's an android. I don't think she's an android, bro. Bro, watch, watch, watch. I think she's a human child. <laughs> I think she's a robot. I mean, I don't... Are you saying Sarada is also a robot? <clears throat> no, she. Why, why don't we? Well, why don't we revisit this conversation later? Yeah. Anyway, so robot. <laughs> Beep, boop, boop, bop. Man, Beep, bop. She's a robot for Rip, sure. Rock, rock, if I had the rocket punch, I would have done that. <laughs> but I didn't get a chance to reassemble the entire. <laughs> reassemble like a robot. You see, bro. Come on, you <laughs> <like> <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, Serata falls to her knees because she's just like the seventh Lord Seventh's dead. Um, and Mitsuki goes off to go find Boruto. Uh, Serata, uh, well, uh, we then cut Serata stays where she is, just kind of in shock that Naruto might be dead. Um, Kawaki talks about how the number one enemy, Kanoha's number one enemy, is uh, is Boruto now that he's uh, Hokage killing Otsosuki. Uh, <laughs> And uh wow. Yeah, Ada's like, did you really have to take it that far? And he's like, I mean, it worked out for me, to be honest. I wasn't planning on this, but uh this is pretty rad. Uh he says that Lord Seven is actually safe, so as long as he stays sealed away, I won't release him after I've dealt with Boruto and Code. So yep. That's uh that's what's going on right now. Um Damon comes out of nowhere and tackles Kawaki to the ground. And um, that's when uh, we cut back to Sasuke, who has arrived where Sarada is. And uh, he's like, hey, are you okay, Sarada? Where's Mitsuki? Wasn't he with you? And uh, Sarada tries to explain the whole situation. And uh, Sasuke does reveal, as I said, last time we talked about Boruto. Yeah, you were right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Damn right. (laughs) That Sasuke is also brainwashed, and he's like, well, that makes total sense. He killed our ninja president. Uh, so, Sarada is kind of shocked that Sasuke is also brainwashed at this point. Um, Wait, time out, time out. Did no one else, did anyone say he wasn't brainwashed? Was that like Brian, a thing? Brian was, I thought there was a chance that. Brian was advocating brought. pretty hard that he wasn't brainwashed. Brian was going hard in the paint. About yeah, I thought that was a chance that Sasuke wasn't affected, and I thought it was because of like showering up. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to make oh, I'm sorry. I guess it was the fact that um Sarada and other girl were friends with um with what's her face? Ada. Yeah. So there was indeed a winner and loser in this situation. Correct. Okay. <laughs> no, there are no winners and losers here. I'm being a silly boy. Even people like me who are always right sometimes get it wrong. Well, wow. then I guess you're not always right, are you? Well, I'm right that I'm wrong. So that means mm. I'm always right. Hmm. You win this round, younger brother. <laughs> one, one. With that, with that amazing logic, I can't... <laughs> um, anyway, uh... Serata is just like, what the fuck is dad talking about? The fuck is dad on right now? And uh, You're on that crack again. <laughs> You're on the edge, Lord Crack again, dad. With your one eye exposed and your other one hidden under your hair. Where are they going to use this girl's name, by the way? I'm trying to find it, bro. She, they don't even call her by her name in the next page. They just call her class rep. I guess so that's her name. Robot? 
Her name, she's not a robot. Uh, there, I would say. <laughs> No, I would say, uh, yeah, we're calling her class, class rep, rep until her fucking name comes up. But, um, yeah, class rep is like, Serata, can you hear me? And I guess they're talking uh, ninja telepathically. Um, and she explains that, like, I need to ask you something. There's no time, so I'm going to be blunt, right? I'm going to be real blunt. Do you think that you're completely of sound mind right now? And... Um, we cut back to Boruto, who is currently on the run. Uh, he looks up into the sky and he notices uh, one of Inojin's uh, cartoon beast mimicry attacks. And he comes face to face with, uh, um, damn, what's the girl's name? Choji's daughter? Choji's daughter's giant fish fist. Um, and uh, yeah, the Ino, the new gen uh, Ino Shikacho uh, squad. Uh, captures Boruto in his tracks using the Shadow Possession Jutsu. Uh, we see that they are also completely under the spell, of course. Um, and at that point, we cut back over to Serato, who is discussing things with Class Rep. Um, wait, is I think is, is she calling Serata Class Rep? I think she's calling Serata Class Rep. Oh, maybe. Oh, let me. Man, this back. lady does not have any kind of identification whatsoever can you yeah brian could you look up her name please <laughs> I, can you I please know truly I'm unfortunate to be honest. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy uh anyway uh science girl is uh basically explaining things that like uh, serata answers first of all is like i am i of sound mind i'm not sure things have been weird since we since like a bit earlier and uh she talks about how like Serata and herself should be fine. Uh, and, you know, she's basically waffling between this conversation and the conversation with Sasuke. And uh, Sasuke is just like, are you okay, Serata? You're you're pale. Are you injured? Um, and Science Girl is like, I haven't figured it out all yet. Uh, but given the facts, I'd say that Ada is somehow involved. And um, she explains that, like, it's a similar phenomenon to the people who become captive uh, you know, her charming jutsu thing. Uh, so, you know, something's happened to everyone. It's the only possibility, especially if they, those two are the only ones not affected. Um, and at that point, uh, Oh, Samir. Her name is Samir. Samir, uh, Kake. Oh, Sumire. Samir. Samir. There you go. Samir. Thanks, Josh. She has purple hair. <laughs> Very robotic to me. Hmm. Well, I can't argue. To be honest, looking at the wiki page of her, she does look a little robotic. Is, yeah. Does the wiki page say that she's robotic? That she's a robot? That's a good no, answer. No, but she just looks like it. What does it say she okay. is? Okay. Samir Kake, born she's Samir a, Shigaraki. She's a Michi from the Scientific Ninja Weapons team. So there is a chance she could be a robot. Former member of Team 15, she was also the class representative of Boruto class in the Ninja Academy. So she is a, she was a class rep. Okay, okay, so she is the class. And rep. then it also says down here that there is a high chance that she is in fact a robot. Is that what it and says? Christian Espinal. Oh, okay. Well. Damn. That's so it's not a hundred percent, but they did say a high chance. No, yeah. yeah if they I called, there's a chance. There's a legitimate chance. If they called me out by name, I guess it must be true. Yeah. That's fucked up of the wiki to put me on blast like that. You know, we're just getting up there like that. New Jump City, we out there. <laughs> uh, if you're on YouTube, leave a like. Yeah, and, watch uh, out. Drop a comment. We're coming, dude. Hey, we're coming back. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So Sasuke is also just kind of confused at this point because he knows what he knows, but he's also like, my daughter's acting weird. Um, And uh, the class rep, uh, Sumire, is on the other side. He would know anyway. Yeah. Uh, Samira is on the other end just being like just earlier everybody was chasing Kawaki but then all of a sudden they just changed their minds and started to attack Boruto instead so the idea is like Aina must have done something to save Kawaki from his predicament that's the only thing I can think of and um, Sarada starts to break into tears about this like it's too cruel why can't Boruto ever catch a break and um, she explains that she might they might be the only people who could help Boruto at this point and they're not really sure what they can do. 
Um, so Serata tries to explain shit to Sasuke. Uh, she says that Boruto isn't guilty. He would never kill Lord Seventh, and he's that everyone's being uh, duped. Uh, and Sasuke mentions like Boruto may have been an outsider, but I've never heard had any prejudices about him. But the reality is, I can't ignore the fact that he tried to kill Kawaki. And <laughs> Serata's like, I didn't. He didn't try to do that. You've got it wrong. Um. So yeah, Boruto's just getting yelled at at all sides by Shikadai, and then Momoshiki's on the other side, uh, just be like, huh, "Look at that, kids! Looks like it's gonna be kill or be killed." You know, I could kill them. You could switch b- bodies with me, and I'll kill them for you. And uh, you know, we cut back to Sasuke and Sarada. Sarada just grips onto Sasuke, and uh, asks uh, 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 the first and only selfish favor that she's ever asked. And then she looks at him with Mangekyo Sharingan. Well. <laughs> How'd she get that? Did she always have that? No, this is her awakening of it. That's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> that's wild. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that. So, yeah, she basically asks Sasuke to please help Boruto. And um, we cut back to Boruto as... Uh, the karma markings are appearing on his hands, uh, and Boruto is trying to hold back Momoshiki. Uh, Momoshiki is like, "You're." F-. He's he tells Momoshiki to not hurt his friends, and he's like, "Your friends? I don't see any friends here. In fact, you don't have any friends at all. Just enemies." Um, and he just keeps trying to fucking convince Boruto to just let go and allow him to kill his friends. Uh, but that's when Sasuke pulls up and and yanks. Uh, Boruto away from everybody um, and uh, he explains that um, that he first met him when he happened to stop by Naruto's house for a bit and uh, that day the, that day he asked him to take on a student and then he mastered Rengan, the Rasengan in a flash and fought uh, Momoshiki alongside him and he's like that's who Kawaki is he's Naruto's son according to my mind uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> definitely big cap. Um, and uh, Ada seems to catch wind of this, and uh, he says he, she tells uh, Kawaki to go on without her, that she needs to do something first, and she floats away. Um, we then cut to back to Sasuke and, and uh, Boruto, as uh, they seem to be far away from everybody right now. Uh, they are out of Konoha, it seems at least, and. Um, He's basically explaining how, like, eh, we're far enough now. Uh, we have some time uh, to talk about stuff and, and figure figure things out. Um, and he explains, like, well, Boruto asks Sasuke, is like, why, why are you helping me? You should be thinking I'm the enemy now, right? And uh, he explains that um, that that the headband that uh, Boruto has is the one he gave to Kawaki, but for some reason, Boruto is the one that has it. And he says, I know that you're there, Otsusuki Momoshiki. You should see inside Kawaki. You should be inside Kawaki. So why are you here? So, you know, start things are starting to not add up for Sasuke. Um, and uh, he says, at the same time, I actively feel in my mind that each thing drastically bothering me less and less. It's quite terrifying. Um, and he's basically talking about how, like, I never gave it a thought how my own memories might be undependable. So... Uh, he said uh, he doesn't know what to believe anymore, so he decided that even if he doubts himself, that he'd believe in his daughter, Serata, which is actually quite sweet, coming from Sasuke. Um, And uh, he's basically like, I will help you because my daughter wishes it. That is worth risking my mind. And Momoshiki is tight right now. (laughs) He's like, he's going to help Boruto for his daughter? Even though he perceives Boruto to be an enemy? Um, so basically he's like, I may be in the process of committing a monumental mistake. So prove me wrong and validate Serata. And, uh, dude, Momoshiki goes full hater mode. Uh, he, yeah. he is, he is vying for hater of the year. Cause he gets right close to Boruto. It's just, just like, don't let it go to your head, Boruto. This one man's help won't change the fact that you've lost so much. Omnipotence happened. That's the unmistakable reality. As in Ada was simply the trigger for even if you kill, even if you were to kill her here and now, it would not reverse the changes that have already taken place. Um, 
And uh, Boruto is basically like, man, you're talking too much. Why are you so scared? Uh, <laughs> and uh, Momoshiki just starts yelling at him. He's like, your role is finished. So stop being a sore, sore loser, you imp. Uh, Boruto obviously retorts with like, whatever, man. You're the you're one to talk about being a sore loser. You're the one inhabiting my body because you won't die, even though you lost. Right. <laughs> And uh, Moishi is like, damn, brat, what kind of, what crazy mental resolve he has. Um, and that's when uh, none other than Ada arrives on the scene. Um, and Ada is actually like, I know apologies won't really cut it, but I'm still sorry, Boruto. Um, so she basically is like, you already know what happened to you, right? And uh, Boruto is like, yeah, I know, Kawaki and I switch places. And he's like, I only wanted to help Kawaki, but it seems I did something unintentionally. So I, I never thought it would turn out like this. Uh, she explains that something similar happened before. And but and by the time she realized it, everyone had become her captive. So this is a completely unconscious thing. And I guess she can't really kind of change anything about it. So um, Ada realizes, like, I th you're so calm about it. I thought you'd be totally depressed. And uh, Boruto is like, well, actually, I am pretty fucked up about it. But even <laughs> so, I can't stop thinking about him. Uh, and, you know, he's obviously talking about Naruto. You know, this insecurity, this loneliness, and everything he's feeling right now is something that he's lived with since he was a kid. Um, so, you know, he's the polar opposite of him. And he thought he understood Naruto very well. But I guess he was just, uh, I, I guess it was pissing him off. That even though I never had new hardship, I was acting like I understood. Um, Real shit. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Um, so Ada says that uh, he does acknowledge you as a true brother. That's how it seems to me. Um, but he explains that he also had nothing, just like the current you, and he was shunned by many people. Uh, he was talking about Naruto. He said, but he became Hokage by proving himself through his own act actions and by being kind of a chosen one. <laughs> if you truly say you are his son. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Uh, but he says, if you're truly, you truly are his son, then show us just as he did. And Momoshiki's like, damn it, all these encouraging words of affirmation. <laughs> it's my kryptonite. <laughs> I hate positivity. <laughs> um, and he's basically like, well, I never for a second considered this as losing everything. You know, he's like, I still got, I've still, I've got flowing inside me, the blood of my dad, the seventh Hokage, my mom's Hyuga blood too. And my granddad was the fourth Hokage. And he uh, starts to tie on his uh, ninja headband as he says that I am a Konoha, will of fire ninja. One of these. Right. Um, so he's like, in fact, the one who drove Kawaki into this corner was none other than me. And it's like, ooh, talking shit. I love it. <laughs> um, and he's like, it's due to my own weakness that I can finally see that now. And he's like, I can't let this end as brother killing brother. Instead, I got to get a lot stronger and turn this into a mere quarrel between siblings that's what my dad would do and uh that is true yeah um and ada's like are you sure barto you're only 12 and i'm like why is that a factor in this world <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shit is that for the Get first time real. somebody addresses that someone is too young to be <laughs> in state <laughs> you're 12 years old it's like yeah people have been child soldiers in this world forever Zabuza killed a bunch of people when he was like 10, right? Like, <laughs> <Thank> yeah. <you. laughs> yeah. Fucking Kakashi was in the Anbu at like 10, right? Yeah. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I guess Ada's not familiar with the fact that children are fully expected to fight wars by the time they're like 12. <laughs> uh, but anyway. So. Um, Ada actually promises that, like, you know, she didn't really mean for this to happen. Uh, and but she doesn't really like how this kind of turned Kawaki into a little bit of a coward. 
So she makes herself a little, uh, she makes Boruto a little promise that she promises not to look for Boruto uh, or Sasuke, no matter what Shikamaru does, says, or no matter what Kawaki says, which is kind of a big deal for Ada. Um, I respect that a little bit. Kind of is a big deal because she really doesn't have to at all. No, it's she truly just a gesture and. I guess it gets a pass, narratively speaking. Yeah. I'm also glad that they got this out the way now for, you know, later on, yeah. like, it coming up and being like, oh, she why didn't she just use her thing to find them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, good that they got this out the way now. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he tells, uh, he tells, um, Ada to let Serata know that, um, uh, to thank her for sending Sasuke after him and uh, not to worry because he's definitely coming back. Um, Ada agrees in a very Sundere way. And uh, Daemon says that uh, to tells Boruto to get tons stronger while he's at it. Enough that I have to fight at full strength for the first time in his life. <laughs> Fucking shitter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you hate Daemon. I like him. Fuck that kid. <laughs> uh, so I just think that he's literally the strongest character in the series. Yeah, he really is. He's the strongest <laughs> by far. It pisses me off. <laughs> and Boruto even acknowledges right here. He's like, I don't think I've got enough lives for that. <laughs> because you're so strong, Daemon. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you're, so damn dr- you're so strong, Daemon. It's true. It's crazy how you don't take things seriously because you're so damn strong. <laughs> Uh, you do love it, Brian. Yeah, Brian loves it. He secretly loves it. Uh, so yeah, basically Sasuke and Boruto head out. Um, and uh, meanwhile, we get another cut of uh, Code doing his whole Doctor Claw thing, where he's like, "I'll get you next time, Gadget. <laughs> next time." Um. Kawaki is looking up at uh, Naruto statue and he says that it's no use hiding anywhere. As long as you're Otsusuki, I'll kill you, bro. Bro. And uh, the last chapter has Boruto getting up, uh, doing a cool punch to his own palm and saying, I will show you to you're begging me to stop that I'm Uzumaki Boruto, damn it. And uh, that's where the chapter ends. And Boruto is going to be on hiatus until August. So, no. Yeah. Damn. Yep. That's all right. June, July. That's only two months. Yeah. Well, no May because we're not going to get the chapter in May. It's three no, months. Yeah, three month not. time skip. Yep. Yeah. How long was the ship within time skip? I actually don't know. I think the time skip was well underway when I already started uh, Naruto. Yeah, it was probably. It probably wasn't like a literal large gap between chapters when the time skip happened. Yeah, because Josh, remember we we actually caught up to I. Well, I think I guess I actually caught up to Naruto during the pain fight. So, Same. We, well, I didn't catch up to it, but that's when I started reading it at all. Yeah, I can check right now. Uh, well, yeah. Well. Well, I'm excited. Uh, that was Boruto chapter 80. Uh, Josh, what did you think about the chapter? This is my favorite chapter of the week. Even though it's not anything I'm going to write down, but I just felt like I had to let it be known. Yeah, this is my RGC. This is also my RGC, so <laughs> I'm going to give it a little... We'll do the drop anyway, yeah. Yep. Is this Boruto's first unified RGC? RGC. Yep. RGC! Unified RGC! Yep, that I guess that is Boruto's. I, I actually don't remember, but it might be Boruto's first really good, uh, unified, really good chapter of the week. Um, yeah, but go on, Josh. Yeah, there's a few, uh, few things to mention this chapter. First of all, Sasuke's. <laughs> oh man so he's like oh uh she's acting strange or something like that in my mind i'm like dog 
you barely even around to know how to fuck your daughter act normally. So <laughs> you that you got some nerve <laughs> trying to deduce something there. But um with that said, I actually really did like that. He was like, nah, I'm going hard for my daughter. My daughter. Cause my daughter. daughter. He said it like three fucking times. Mad my daughter. daughter. I like that, man. Don't you hurt my daughter. He's just making it clear that he's only there because of Serata. <laughs> like Because he loves his daughter. It's undeniable. He's there for her. This is the father doing something for his daughter moment in Boruto. So shut the fuck up, everybody else. I swear to God, I'm a good dad. I swear. Very kindly. Thank you. I swear I'm such a good father. I swear to God. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it screamed, but I, like I said, I was here for it. No, I mean, I'm here I'm for it, too. For it. I don't mind. I liked I, it. I, I thought it was great. Um, it, it was a nice touch. And you mean, <laughs> you know, unlocking the Mangekyo Sharingan, I guess I'll pop that bottle open. But I, it was just like, oh, okay, now he's going to definitely listen to her. Like, oh, you're showing some cool power? <laughs> okay, now you're valid. Huh. Now you're worth <laughs> Oh, I guess you are my daughter after all. I guess I could stop disappearing from the village for years at a time now. And actually <laughs> raise you. Whether, you. whether you're really mine or not. <laughs> you know, for not, for real, for real, I was starting to wonder. It's like, is this, is this chick even mine? I remember I already had the Mangekyo at her age. Well, I don't know what she's doing. Right, right. It's, that it's, not, it's not that... She didn't have the Sharingan, but she did. Instead, he was weak and insignificant. <laughs> and that was never Sasuke. Could have been any Ochiha, really. I guess that's from her mother, unfortunately. Yeah. But you know, Kishimoto is trying. He's trying a lot, especially in this chapter. The Rod is doing big things. The, the uh, robot uh, girl that's a big class rep, she um, used ninja telepathy. That was pretty crazy. We're going to talk about that one, or we're going to let that one go. You can. You want to vote on it? What do you think? Vote. I don't on, mind talking on... about it. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. What do you think, Brian? Is it egregious to you? Or... <laughs> I think. Do you think it's, it's egregious? Likely. I think it could be likely, but I don't think she is. You think it's some kind of technology? Maybe they just have like a, just an earbud in. Maybe. I think so. No, last we remember, all right, now all right, we're getting real, okay? Last I remember, they were using the um the the mind the the you know the mind jutsu ninjas. That's Eno's uh, plan. Yeah, remember they was using their their connection to to connect each other's thoughts. Can they do that? Because that's how they communicate, like, right? Can they cut that's, off? That's they can they cut so off connection like, between people and just like use talk to whoever they want? Hell no, like they're they're listening. People listen to their, their conversation for sure. If anyone was listening, but they was. They was all on that support. Make, I mean, nobody's reacting to it at all. Plot hole. <laughs> he thought he thought he thought he was solving everything with Ada saying, I'm doing this out of respect. I won't use my god eye, my senjutsu, my senrigon. That just sounds so epic. Uh like the spy, and he he missed the spy. Hmm. You missed the spot, but I'm re- I'm willing to let it go. Yeah, I mean, like I, 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 I I'm liking the trajectory of what we might get in August. Yeah, and moving forward. Hmm. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Well, we could have an open discussion about this Mangekyo. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna start. No one died. Someone metaphorically died, I guess. Who metaphorically died? Is that enough? Died? Boruto? Is that a yeah. metaphorical death to you? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, to me, no. But to Sarada? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Via Kishimoto's imagination, you know what I'm saying? Death by Kishimoto's so, imagination? Yeah. So, um, Mangekyo happens after like extreme trauma like a st- extremely traumatic event happens it doesn't have to be a death necessarily but i thought your best bro got to die well that's not traumatic. It, it's all your about a hundred thousand it's all about trauma because the uchima not the uchima the uchiha clan are very emotional people 
So they're kind of always like, um, how do you say, like emotionally, um, damn, what's the word? <clears throat> like that's their weak spot. So, um, they like emotion. Why, yeah, the like it, they're very emotional <laughs> people compared to most, but. I think this makes sense because this is a lot to kind of take in Um, because not well, you'd want you'd think that um, you'd have to have like your best friend die, but she just heard that Boruto that Naruto is probably dead. So like she doesn't know if Naruto's alive or not. All she knows is that he is probably dead. Her best friend is that she knows is not to blame for it is on the run being hunted by the entire world and only two people in the entire world know about it uh, know about the truth or three yeah you know i'm not like i wasn't s- stressed at all really about the mangekyo mostly because like the mangekyo sh- sharingan is just like so yesterday's news there's so many eyes you can get in the sharingan lineage the mangekyo is just basically like the rookie form, like the champion form, I guess, of of the Sharingan in a sense, if you're translating to Digimon terms. I mean, a mangekyo now, like a mangekyo in a world without so many eyes, without so many Sharingan, is a pretty big deal. It would be a pretty big deal. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's so many eyes Especially What's like the next thing past Mangekyo, that's Renengan. Renengan. And then there's the Renengan right. Sharingan thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then there's uh there, there's another level after that, right? Is it is it Renengan? Hmm? There's another level after the Sharingan Renengan thing, right? I don't think so. I think that's the highest. Well, still, you know, like I feel like Mangekyo is The Renengan just... is like the ultimate Sharingan. Yeah, I remember that just like Mangekyo used to be a big deal, but then like, yeah, the, now it just feels I like I had 11 of them. Yeah, it's like going Super Saiyan 1, you know, anybody could do it at this point. Yeah, well, I, I, I needed to see someone die from them to activate personally. <laughs> I was offended by this. No, that's just how Itachi, uh, Itachi's weird ass did it. He told Sasuke. And Sasuke. Well, that's the thing is like he told Sasuke that that's how it goes, but that's not necessarily true. Oh, he lied. Yeah. To make Sasuke uh, more willing to kill him, I guess, in the future to make Sasuke stronger. Well. Yeah. It's all about extreme, lied to trauma. Also. Ex- extreme emotional trauma. Yeah. <sighs> um, Were those all your thoughts, Josh, though? Yeah. Brian, what did you think? I think this was Boruto's best chapter by far. I agree. There, This is like the best written, like the best paced, like everything in this chapter was extremely well done. And honestly, I'm like really, really impressed. No, this was all extremely intended. Um, everything about this chapter is very intended. Um, the the callback to when Boruto saw the future earlier, that scene showed up here with um with the Ino Shikacho. Mm-hmm. That came back into play. Um, Sasuke is so fucking good in this chapter because he he comes across as like like um like he he's automatically as soon as sarada brings shit up like brings up what's going on he immediately tries to find ways to validate how she's thinking and finds evidence of her being right so he's like all right there's something to hold on to here so i will i i'm gonna follow her she i feel like she has an actual understanding of what's going on and um even though um so even though Ada shows up and kind of confirms everything that's going on, he still doesn't truly fully believe her either. So he's still always like in a in the middle, you know? He's not he's not going to head over heels just believe 
everything that's happening before him because his memory is kind of fucked. Um, but he's still he's still in it uh, for Sarada. And if there's anybody to have on your side when the whole world is against you, it's Sasuke. Yeah, this he... man has all of the experience to know what it what to do and how to survive when um you're being hunted or when the when um you, when you're against the world so this is honestly like best case scenario for um for boruto and boruto in this chapter was such a good fucking character <laughs> like uh so Agreed. good composed and intelligent and and um very similar to naruto but in a very different way <laughs> like it's like a different take on on naruto you know and i really like the way um boruto's kind of becoming his own character while still having similar similarities to his father um man, boruto, I, I mean naruto ain't faced this kind of strife uh that boruto has to be frank i mean naruto went through a lot not nah, nah well I think Boruto went through a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean it's like they're they're like reverse. They're like a reverse, uh, a reversal of each other. Um, you know, Boruto starts with everything and ended up with nothing, and Naruto started with nothing and had to make something of himself. So it, it's um, it's a reversal, which is really interesting. Um, but also, um, this is the first time Boruto has really had like strife in his life you know like um he only just started having to have like a tough life and uh feeling the same way his father felt so it, it'll be interesting to see how he kind of holds up to it i like the idea that that literally it's nar it's boruto and, and sasuke versus the world i really yeah. like that idea and I like that it's not just, oh, I'm just going to run around and fight everybody until I until they all believe me. Um, it's like a truly I'm trying to clear my name kind of thing. It's not just a, I'm going to go fuck up Kawaki because he did this to me. Because it adds more complexity, you know, it's not. Um, Boruto understands that this isn't a situation that you just punch away like this is a situation that you have to earn back you have to earn back all that you had before and i i love the way that he thought of it as like trying to bring it down to a, a quarrel between siblings because that, that that was just really sick and uh i think that that line right there just one so probably brought sasuke over to his side again like fully so yeah I'm that shit hit him hit him on a personal level mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what Naruto did for Sasuke. <laughs> that's exactly what he did. He he didn't stop believing in um in his brother, no matter what. For years, no matter what he did, he still stood by Sasuke's side and tried to bring him back. And um, this is showing shades of that. And he really is his fucking son. But damn, oh man, there's just I I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling because there's just so much about this chapter that was so good. Um, I don't think you're rambling, bro. Yeah. There you go some good thoughts. I, I do have a pretty serious question though when you're finished. Yeah, I'm I just I'm gonna really I'm really looking forward to when this series comes back because I'm honestly I've been super impressed with Boruto for the past few months. But this series, this chapter, put Boruto into an actual like conversational place of being probably on par with Naruto, like the original series. Mm. For That's me, pretty least. heavy. What do you think, Chris? That's pretty heavy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's a little heavy, but I understand. I think this was a quality okay. chapter as well, but uh. Yeah. Well, before you give, before you dive into your thoughts, so all right, Brian, mm -hmm. could you swear to God that <laughs> when you were younger and watching Naruto, that Sasuke wasn't your favorite character? He wasn't. You could swear to God. Yeah, 
You guys, Christian, I wasn't a big fan of Sasuke. No, yeah, he he was not. He was not a Sasuke boy. So I guess the next question wouldn't make much sense then. What was the next question? Then if Sasuke was in fact your favorite character, is could you also swear to God that while everybody else's favorite moment in the tuning exam was in fact uh, Rock Lee getting the jump on Gara? Yeah, I was a Rock Lee fan. Brian, in that fight. Brian, Brian's favorite moment was in fact uh, Sasuke hitting Gara with the Chidori. No. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of falls apart because, you know, it's not as. I will say I'm a big fan of Sasuke now. Mm. Like, I think this is the best version of him we've had so far. Mm. Actually, all jokes aside, I really, um, I have been enjoying. I don't want to say have been. It's really cool to see Sasuke in this light with this cha- in this chapter, and I too want to see how him and Baruto move going forward. But uh, anyway, enough of my shenanigans. What's up, Chris? If you thought, um, yeah, I mean, Brian said pretty much everything I I could want to say. I thought this was like a great chapter as well. Um, I mean, you know, I've. I've had a little bit of a wishy-washy relationship with Boruto. Uh, I'm coming around to it now. Uh, there have definitely been chapters that have been pretty great in my eyes in the recent memory. Um, I always thought that like one of the weaker parts of Boruto was Boruto himself. And not necessarily because he's like a terrible character or anything, but I, uh, yeah, I found him to be a little bland, I guess. Um, you know, he is kind of the opposite of of Naruto which I appreciated because everybody in the series like amongst the new gen these new kids tends to be like a, almost a carbon copy of their their parents um and it's cool to see Boruto be a little different from Naruto not wanting to be Hokage necessarily you know I, I like that they're they were trying to do something different with Boruto and distinguish him from Naruto because otherwise what's the point of doing this series you know uh and i love what they did here uh you know in terms of the reversal i think it's the logical place to take boruto is just like doing the switchy places things with not just naruto and making him understand what naruto felt in his youth being ostracized from the village and all that stuff but also sasuke in his like teens when he was like on the run from the village and um you know, putting him on that road as well. So I, I think what what's going to happen is he's, he's going to get like the best of both of those experiences um, when he comes back to the village, whenever that may be. Uh, and it is kind of like almost a reflection of Naruto going off with Jiraiya, even though it's under much yeah, more... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's it's much more pressing circumstances, obviously, since Naruto is technically a criminal at this point. But, you know, Naruto left the village in a similar way, leaving with a uh, a mentor character. Um, it's just that this time they're just going to be on the run. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm excited to see where this series goes from here. Uh, you know, how it gets to that point in the time skip where the war between Kawaki and Boruto is well underway. And, uh, yeah, there's just a, there's a lot to look forward to here. Um I'm excited. I don't really got much else to say. I, I thought the reversal was cool and Boruto's perspective on like what's been happening to him. He's been absorbing it in a really interesting way that I don't think Naruto in his youth probably would have handled the same way. I think he would have gotten to this point eventually, but Naruto is, was a lot more hot headed. Even yeah, though he, he was, was, he definitely was, even though he was like as wise as Boruto is now, I think they're both on an equal level in terms of just like understanding things and their more rational selves. But I don't they know. They definitely how... have emotional maturity. Uh... Yeah. But I feel like Naruto would have taken a minute to get to where Boruto got immediately. And yeah. I think it is, you know, just coming from being Naruto's son and, you know, just understanding what his dad went through already to some degree. Um, allowed him to have the perspective to really take this moment in and, and accept it for what it is. I think it's really cool uh, and uh, and unique. So, 
Yeah, I, I feel like uh, we're finally getting a fully formed Boruto as a character, and, and uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, I now like Boruto as a character, yeah, uh, pretty much definitively. So it's official. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, took him long enough I'll, to get here, but I don't mind it at all. Better late than never. I'll, all it took was his character arc to actually start for us. I mean, to hey, eighty chapters in, it. and your main character's arc hasn't started. I mean. <laughs> Uh, that's not entirely my fault. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. What I like about the series is that it set all of this up in advance and is now like pushing towards all that it's set up, you know? Yeah. Um, I really, I really, really enjoy the way that they uh, did everything. Um, with like the foreshadowing and like the the build up for all the characters beforehand, even though it was very sloppy, um, it was like necessary world building to do what they wanted to do with this with this manga. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it was like very sloppy. I guess there was just like a lot of fluff that I didn't really care for. Uh, you know, I I wish it was just more focused on Boruto and you know the kids to begin with. Because then we got all this I, stuff with I, ninja tools and androids and robots and shit. <laughs> and I'm the like, thing oh, is, I, I, I feel like I feel like um, if it was focused too much on the kids, people wouldn't have enjoyed it as wouldn't have read it this much. Like, I think this was a perfect way to adapt the series. Well, maybe not perfect, but um, I think this was the correct way to go about it was to uh, um, have the kids kind of uh, structured within the old core. Uh, oh, I agree with that. Kind of like, That's kind of like having training wheels, you know? No, yeah. And I'm then... not saying get rid of... Uh, my problem is not the adult kids from the last series. Mm -hmm. I just like... Uh, I guess like there's these like su more superfluous things going on. Like uh, there was like a whole arc on Ninja Tools. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I wish they had done like a full tuning exam arc. That would have been good. I would have I would have been cool with a repeat of the tuning exams for like a chapter or two in earnest. You know, now you mentioned the ninja tools, I wonder if there's like like if they're going to call back on you know I'm sure they will on on stuff from there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Because they kind of alluded to the fact that Boruto is the kind of person to cut corners as well. And I wonder how that would like apply to him in the future. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the use of ninja tools is exactly cutting corners. It was the way that Boruto was using them at the time, but yeah, who knows? I, I feel like they're definitely gonna, there's ninja tools are not, are not going to be forgotten in this series, but yeah, that's all I really had to say about Boruto. I thought it was great. Uh, a fun time. Good read overall. Kishimoto. Good job. <laughs> Highly impressed. Yeah. Yes. Stupendous. Right. Superb. Are, <laughs> are we ready to move on? Yes. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's go. Dragon Ball Super. Oh shit, I forgot about this. <laughs> How could you forget? <laughs> this is Dragon Ball Super Chapter 92, New Androids. Uh it's been a minute since we talked about Dragon Ball Super, mostly because uh, they've been doing this, like, last we talked about, it, they were doing this weird prelude to, like, Dragon Ball Super Heroes. And now, uh, for the last two months, they've been doing uh, the superheroes movie proper, basically. Um, and what's been happening so far is, like in the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, this is probably a good way to absorb it, to be honest. It's actually a pretty good adaption not for nothing uh but basically what's been go it's basically detailing like the first act of the movie was like the first chapter or so where uh there are these uh the storyline with piccolo uh watching after pan which is uh the daughter of gohan and videl uh he's basically been training her um and gohan has been you know hard at work at his studies and as usual, people from the Z Fighters are hating on that. <laughs> it's like, why aren't you doing martial arts 24-7 like your family? <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, go, P 
Piccolo's trying to get him back in the groove of training. Um, meanwhile, the Red, Wib- Red Ribbon Army is looking to uh, revive themselves using the uh, the help of their young prodigy, the grandson of Dr. Giro. Uh His name is Hedo, I believe. Um, and he just recently got out of prison and was recruited by Red Pharmaceuticals, which is secretly the Red Ribbon Army returned. Um, and basically they contract him to create new androids and, uh, we get to see them. He models these androids after superheroes, after being, I guess, inspired by Goten and Trunks and their little superhero fad that's been going on with them. Um, so I forget the names of these androids, to be honest. I know there's like, uh, Gamma one and Gamma two. Okay. There you go. Well, that was easy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And uh, this chapter starts off with uh, Gamma 2 uh, arriving to where uh, Piccolo is. And, uh, yeah, they, they fight. <laughs> they they battle for a while. Uh, you know, uh, it's actually it's pretty cool. Uh, lots of kicking and punching and cool shit like that. I do not mind it at all, to be honest. It's actually a really good uh, adaptation from, like, the movie. It, it flows yeah. pretty good. Um, but uh, inevitably, Piccolo uh, takes what seems to be a massive blast from this guy's energy gun, uh, from Gamma 2's energy gun, and seems to be destroyed as he can't find his signal. But Piccolo actually survived, and uh, he follows Gamma 2 back to his headquarters where uh, he takes one of the guards and uh, disguises himself as one of them in a cool espionage sort of way. Uh, He infiltrates uh, the Red Ribbon Army's headquarters and uh, arrives at this meeting room where uh, Hedo is, uh, is getting, is getting briefed by the Gamma twins. Um, And basically uh, Gamma two gets scolded by Gamma one for uh, going a little overboard on a mere trial um and yeah he's like your inf- your affiliation got blown you know people know who you are and uh, and Hedo's like well you're the one who's who told them that we should told me that we should have the red ribbon army symbols on them i didn't want them on there um, hey, dickhead stupid you trying to be clandestine yeah <laughs> it's like oh yeah you're going to get mad at me for blowing our cover hey maybe we'll not put the fucking logo of your evil headquarters right on the sleeve uh so basically uh number two uh thinks that piccolo is gone that he's a goner because he uh blasted him to smithereens um and that's not like level yeah uh we then go to the red ribbon arbing just kind of like debriefing people on goku and vegeta uh and boo as like kind of like the biggest threats in uh in their way right now hercule is among them uh who quote whose true strength eludes them (laughs) i uh i've always loved that detail that hercule takes responsibility for all the victories that the z fighters get Um, yeah i like that a lot yeah um and uh they actually uh are like you know, once my once my uh, Hedo talks about how like once the Gammas eradicate the entirety of that powerful, dastardly secret organization, uh, starting with Bulma herself, it's only a matter of time before you can dominate this rotten world. And uh, they ask when Cell Max is going to be ready, and he's like, "It's cool, don't worry about it. Uh, we're we're working on it." And he's a, uh, and we see uh, Cell Max, which is which looks a lot like the second form of cell and uh piccolo's like oh shit it's cell again uh damn damn. um so yeah hedo is basically like well you know he needs more time obviously uh his body is largely complete but the control program for his mind can't be rushed and um the the evil businessman of course wants cell max up and running right now uh, but Hedo is like, haste makes weights, Commander. The beast, this beast is a veritable monster that far outclasses that previous cell. So, you know, we need to be sure we can control him before we let him out. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, he's like, you could trust me on that. 
Um, mm-hmm. So Piccolo goes off. He calls Bulma and tries to explain uh, everything going on. He's, he asks if they can get into the contact with Goku uh, because shit is going down. Uh, and Piccolo uh, escapes from the headquarters. Um, Bulma is unable to reach out to Goku uh, because they, she can't find the device that she uses to communicate with Whis because Goku and Vegeta are currently training with Whis. Um, so he's ba- Piccolo uh, is just like, this is bad. Based on my own battle, I'd say those two gammas are on par with Goku and Vegeta themselves. Um, and uh, Corrin is like, why don't you get Gohan on the uh, on it? Um, and you know he's like, he's he's not strong enough right now. He's a weak bitch. He's a nerd. <laughs> he's a weak little puss. <laughs> he's a pussy. <laughs> um, and he's <laughs> like, can you believe it? He doesn't like violence. And he doesn't like fighting all the time. <laughs> he wants to get a job to support his daughter. Isn't that crazy? What a fucking asshole. Um. <laughs> And, you know, he figures that uh, 17 and 18 wouldn't be much help because they probably have all the data on on them. Um, Majin Buu seems to be down for a long nap right now, so he's useless right now, I guess. And which leaves the only one left uh, to be Piccolo. And um, it's at that moment Bulma finds the device that she uses to get in contact with Whis. She tries it out, but uh, Whis... Uh, steps away from uh, the phone right now to be uh, in the manner of speaking uh, because the training is getting a little hectic and uh, it's revealed that Goku is currently training with Broly uh, who whose story was actually skipped over in the manga Um, and (laughs) yeah um, you know they're training and they're training and stuff and uh, Goku manages to you know land kind of a blow on him but broly blocks it and um goku's like nice one you're getting the hang of like fighting properly you know and not like a cool berserker from the early 2000s um and he's like yeah but it's still tricky and he's like you'll get used to it pretty soon uh you'll have a pretty soon you'll be fighting with a level head without snapping into a rage so you know he's like this time we're gonna kick things up and uh broly's like i am ready son goku and that's where the chapter ends. Uh, yeah, that was Dragon Ball Super. Josh, what did you think about Dragon Ball Super Chapter 92? Um, this was... All right. I really like this chapter. Um, admittedly, I hadn't read like the past uh, three, so I wasn't really sure about the background initially reading it, but I did read... Um, I basically caught up um, like today. And I will say that, man, it was cool to see Piccolo be the focus um, of a fight. It sucks that he didn't come out as the winner, but he did do some cool stuff. You know, he's smart. Yeah. I guess it's not all about fighting with Piccolo. <laughs> did you watch the movie? Um, No, I did not. I saw it, though. Mm. All right, so no spoilers then. Yeah. I know about... I know some things. But I don't know how they happen. Yeah, I'll there's, leave it at that. there's a little difference already with uh with what's going on with Goku here. Uh that I guess I'll wait till, you know, uh this arc is over. Um but yeah, there's like a, a minor difference there. Um already. But for the most part, it's pretty much a faithful retelling. Um I I didn't really notice anything else out of the uh ordinary um outside of the the Goku subplot, but um, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts, Josh? Um, I was really surprised to see Broly, TBH. I mean, I don't know what happened in the movie, uh, but it's it's nice to see that he's actually a part of the regular story. Yeah, and not just this this legend on the school ground. You know that I've been hearing about since I was like. 10 years old yeah yeah broly is one of those characters like uh that you know you would have loved as a 13 year old (laughs) you know is he a saiyan yeah yeah so like three saiyans survive yeah there's he is uh 
it's Goku, him, and Vegeta are like the last purebred, uh, pure blood Saiyans. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, it's really interesting, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to the next Dragon Ball Super chapter. These these androids look tough as hell. Um, I'm super psyched to see Cell Max. I hope Gohan fights. Well, I heard he does, but I hope it's lit in the comics. But um, what, uh, Brian, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I thought that this chapter was an interesting retelling so far. Um, Josh, do you mind if we talk about like the differences between the movie as the chapters come out? Sure. Try not to get too far. No, ahead. I don't mind. Okay. So, um. So the reason why the Broly Broly showing up the way that he did um is different is because um in the movies, I don't know if this is gonna be any different, but he was more of like a spectator to like a fight between Goku and Vegeta. He I don't think he was really fighting uh with Goku. He wasn't um or training. He was more of a spectator. So um this is already a a I don't know how much this is going to make a difference in the future, but this is already like a interesting change. And I wonder what they're going to do with it. Um, Let's see. And I think that's like the only thing that changed. I don't know if they revealed Cell Max this early, right? I think they did. I think they mentioned him. I, I don't remember the movie enough. I only saw it once. In the I theater. think. I but. think what they I think they just alluded to the fact that there was going to be that there was going to be like a bigger threat that they were working towards but I don't think they just outright mentioned Cell Max this early in the movie. I think they did cuz I remember be Piccolo really freaking out in that scene as well cuz this happens I think this is pretty much almost a, 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 a an identical retelling. Um but I, could, but I mean, you know, my memory is not as good on it. May, may, may I could be wrong as well. Um, but this is pretty much like the first parts of this chapter up to up towards the end is pretty much how the the uh, movie started. Um, and they they're already on the case trying to power scale these guys, uh, Gamma One and Gamma Two, to being Goku and Vegeta's level, um, which I still. Even though they mentioned it like a thousand times in the movie and they mentioned it like they're already mentioning it a lot here, it's still hard to see. <laughs> I don't know why. It's still hard to see them being as strong as Goku and Vegeta. But hey, I mean, we got to believe them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Piccolo hasn't seen them in a while. So his frame of reference is probably like outdated. Maybe, but. It's probably because it's coming from Piccolo. Maybe that's why it's it's hard for us to believe it. But still, Piccolo is no joke. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm interested to see what changes they do because they always do changes, mm -hmm. and we're already seeing one, uh, possibly big change, um, coming into play here. So I'm I'm excited to see what what happens here. Um. But that's that's about it so far for me. Yeah. Um. I like superheroes. I thought it was uh, fine. I, I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, the one thing that was like kind of making me kind of disinterested in this, I wasn't like super excited about like a retelling of, of superheroes, but I, I, I did enjoy reading it. You know, um, I like Piccolo a lot. I think he's great. Um, one of the things I do kind of, I'm trying to wonder if like, I feel like they did start with Goku training, uh, sparring with Broly a little bit and then Vegeta came along and then they started spar uh, sparring. So I think maybe it's just going to transition into like Goku versus Vegeta, uh, which I, I would be all for. I feel like this was a good, like that movie, if it um, was a good little like slow character growth moment for Vegeta. Uh, I won't explain how yet because it's a pretty big, I, I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but um, yeah, I, I'm wondering if they'll just like transition because there's still time for him to be like, Vegeta, you get over here and fight me now. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, anything's possible in that regard. Um, it is good to see Broly. 
uh, actually be a character in the manga. Um, I it, they didn't entire. I think the manga acknowledges that Broly happened, but they didn't do a retelling of the movie for some reason. Um, maybe they will. They probably should. I mean, they can't, but because they they're way past it already. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good chapter overall, and um. It made it more interesting than I thought it would to to reread this stuff. Um, I guess, like, my whole thing is I'm not, like, super invested in the overall... I thought, like, Cell Max, I wasn't, like, crazy about as a villain. But everything else I enjoyed. I do like Gamma 1 and 2. I think their designs are really cool. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I like the Goku and Vegeta and, and Broly stuff. I like Piccolo doing things and being important in the story. Um, so I've, uh, I've got nothing else to really add. Uh, I thought it was a solid chapter overall. Uh, Dragon Ball Super, it's good. Um, any, any rebuttals, anything else to add? Uh, no, not really. Jish? Nope. Alrighty then. Um, and with that, uh, we are going to wrap this show up with some questions from the audience. Uh, our audience being Mike B., uh, the the El, El Sketcherino, <laughs> Sketchy Mike, who uh, sends us questions sometimes. Uh, I am go- We're gonna answer two questions here, uh, from from Sketchy Mike, uh, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, his first question is, who is the goat mangaka? Uh, I personally have to think. I, I personally have to lean to either Gota or uh, Togashi. I. I think Tagashi has a much better case when Hunter Hunter finishes, but he also has Toriyama up there. Uh, so yeah, anybody got their uh, their their goat mangaka? Um, so I was thinking about it, and I think it comes down to consistency and longevity and um, improvement. Um, and though I do believe that um. That Togashi is in the conversation. Uh, unfortunately, you know, with all the health problems and stuff like that, it's hard to really, you know, give it to him just yet, just because, you know, he can't he, he can't really make a manga right now. It's really sad. Yeah. Um, even though it's up there with being probably one of the best of all time. Um, uh, there are a few that could get into that conversation, like Gege. You know, they could possibly break into a a goat conversation, but um, you know, there's Murata who made uh Berserk. Um, there's the the JoJo creator as well, um, Araki. Yeah, Araki. There's the um, other Murata who created One Punch Man. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of you know outside of Shonen Jump, there's a lot of esteemed uh esteemed goaded uh mangaka but i think i'm leaning towards oda (laughs) because nobody has the same you know well i guess i won't say nobody but um he is just in a league of his own when it comes to story to world building and um even his improvement in art has also been like extremely um well well uh like i don't know what what the fuck is the word uh well recorded i'd say like he he like if you look at one piece now compared to one piece from the first chapter it's like a huge marginal like difference in like honing of his craft and writing and in art so i really I really think that Oda has um, like as long as he sticks the landing with the ending of One Piece, it could end up being like the greatest manga of all time. That could be the case. So he, I'll give. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. If, if he could, if he could break the curse of manga ending like shit, then he <laughs> is the goat. <laughs> yeah. Um. A candidate I have is um, the the creators of both um, 
Bakuman and um, Death Note, uh, to Takeshi Obata and Sugumi Oba. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, that's good. Out of you know, me personally, when I thought about goat, it's not like there has to be any specific criteria. But something that came in my mind was the fact that who has more than one critically acclaimed series, you know? And this is one of the few that could come to mind. There's also the guy that made uh, Eye Shield and One Punch Man. Ooh, that's good. But you already mentioned that. Yeah. I think. Although I but should he, correct he's myself. He's not really, made, he didn't, he's not really he, writing One yeah, Punch Man. Yeah, right? one uh, created One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. I see. Murata is just like kind of redrawing. Because uh, One Punch Man existed as like a, a web series where uh, the, the original creator just, like, drew out the entire story. And Murata just recreated it, basically. Oh, okay. Which, God bless him, because he, he, he's just, like, phenomenal, obviously. I wish, I wish Mangaka did that more often, where they would have, like, other artists uh, draw their mangas. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work, I guess. <laughs> Like imagine Murata drawing, um, drawing uh, Hunter Hunter. Oh my God! Imagine Murata drawing anything. <laughs> Any one series, pick one. It'll, so it'll Murata be... takes over for One Piece. Yeah. Oh my God! I love Oda's art, but <sighs> I don't think I could handle Murata drawing One Piece. <laughs> but uh, you go on, Josh. No, I, I don't. I guess I don't really. I can't think of any more to add that y'all haven't already said. I I gave my piece, uh, with those two authors. I mean, with you know, with that, with that one creator, a uh, Dan. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Like I said, with Bakuman and uh, and Death Note, that would probably be my candidate. I love Bakuman so much. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you guys know me. Oda's my guy, the man. Ichiro Oda, but I I do want to, I guess I'll, uh, you know because he's my default answer. I want to give a little bit of a couple of honorable mentions as well. Um, uh, Georgi Morikawa, the creator of Hajime no Ippo. Oh yeah, one of the goats to this day. To this day. Uh, he's uh, he's fantastic. Um. Uh. Kishimoto, I mean, come on. I may not agree with all of Naruto, but Kishimoto, I think, is like uh, he's he's left more than his stamp on uh, on manga history. No matter what his career is going forward, yeah, he's he's a goat. Um, for sure, not Tite Kubo. <laughs> I I feel like mean not saying that, but. I guess maybe if uh, if I finish rereading Bleach, I'll have a different perspective. I feel like just let me say it then. Just let I me be like, the one to say it. Like Don't worry. Kubo breaking out of Japan and kind of having an influence outside of outside of Japan is actually kind of impressive too. Yeah, that's pretty goaded. Uh, my last one, I guess, I'll give is uh, Hiromu Arakawa, the creator of Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, goaded! One of the greatest series of good. all times. You're uh, talking about if if you're talking about uh, multiple acclaimed series too, then that's also a good shout. Yeah, she's got a new one going right now. Uh, I hope it gets released here. But what's it about, Dina? I don't I don't really know the story. Uh, I know it's a I think it's an action series again, but uh, I'm not really sure what it's about. But I'd like to read it. I hope uh, she gets it over here. That would be super cool. It's crazy that they haven't put it here yet, since she's. She's a goat. <laughs> Dude, Full Metal is fucking sick. I need to rewatch it. I've been slowly collecting the manga. I've uh, I'm almost done. I'm I've been collecting little like special editions they put out, uh the hardcover ones. And they look great. They have like color pages and everything. Um Yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've read Full Metal or watched Full Metal. I never read it, but Yeah, I mean, I could I could watch that all day. Um Like that's one of those series I could if it, in anime form, I could like just watch it whenever. 
and just like binge through the whole thing. That and Death Note. Obviously, Josh already said the Death Note guys, but they're fantastic as well. I got to give FMA its chance. Oh, I don't yeah. think it's bad. I just haven't gotten around to giving it a shot. Ooh, you do, man. I think you would love it. It's I think this is your kind of series, bro. I should watch it, right? Yeah, you I mean, either way is fine, uh, to be yeah, honest. I, it's, it's one of the best dubs of all time, too, so you can watch it. Bro, the, the author of Death Note for, like, two arcs? Sorry. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. uh, I mean, de- the anime is, no matter what, you know, n- worth the watch, no matter what. I think I think Full Metal Brotherhood is a timeless anime. Like, it, I think it just holds up um, very well. That's the thing is, like, one of the, I wish, like, the, the original 2003 one, like, the original one, I know it ends in, like, a lot of filler, um, but it tackles, like, the early material really well. I wish they could have just melded the two because there's certain parts that uh, Brotherhood kind of glazes over, which aren't like massively important, but, you know, they lend to the world building a little bit. And, um, you know, there are characters from those early chapters that you don't really see in Brotherhood early on that just appear way later and they seem a little less important. But um, if you could read it, Josh, uh, I think that's also a good idea. But watching it is probably the preferred method for most people, to be honest. I think that's how most people here got to know Full Metal Alchemist is through Adult Swim when it aired. Yeah, I remember watching the first series. Right. But Brotherhood is the is the more manga accurate one. That's the one that needs to be watched. Yes. Me. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe if you want, double back and watch the original 2003 series. Or nah. <laughs> or nah. Uh, anyway, I guess those are my uh, those are my picks. I guess. Um. All right. Second question: Pick any plot element in a manga of your choice that you think didn't work for the story. How would you change oh, it, yeah, and why this. did you pick that plot point? He gives an example. He says, "I would have changed some elements in the Three Kings arc in Yu Yu Hakusho." And not have it end in the format it did. Though I know at the time Togashi's health issues and disillusionment with the manga industry impacted the way he ended the series. Oh. So. That's so. Who wants to go first? How many of them? Dirty Deku. (laughs) Dirty Deku, really? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to go with that. I'm not going to go with that. Should I go first? Um, yeah, sure. Please, give me some time. Technically, mine is also Dirty Deku, but for probably a different reason than what Josh said. I would have honestly extended that arc. That's my thing. I would have made that arc a little longer just because I feel like it would have been more fun and a better way to world build before the final arc. Um, I would just, yeah. I would have given it an arc or two, let them fight, like... A, a villain group or two and you know flesh out the other characters a little bit more and you know have it be kind of like a chase for Deku still but you know make it under the context of fighting you know some villains and showing us this new world you know in a more uh deeper way uh another thing uh is the end of Ice Shield I would have done a little differently I don't really like mm-hmm. how Ice Shield ended it ended uh just because there's uh, there's one last game where a lot of the main characters are not involved in, really. Mm. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, um, a lack of finality for some of the characters. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting premise, but it, I don't know, there's something about it that I didn't really love. They introduced a new character that was kind of annoying. and um, Was he American? No. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, that was. I'm trying to think of there if there's one more thing I would change from anything, but nothing's coming to mind. I think. So, um, Josh, if you have any any ideas, yeah. Um, I guess I'll go. <laughs> I'll go with Bleach, and I'll hone in specifically 
on the uh, Fullbringer arc. That was uh, right after they dealt with Sozin, right? I mean, so wow. wow. With um, Eisen, right? Sozin. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. <yeah. laughs> somebody's high. Anyway, um, uh, where was I at? Uh, the series uh bleach the full bringer arc. bleach full bringer okay so <laughs> i thought it was a, all right for, for i thought it was a huge opportunity missed to make chad a super relevant and important more than just being important like a, a really capable fighter moving forward and there being a reason for him taking all of those l's previously um but it wasn't, you know, he, 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 he did nothing in that arc, did nothing after the arc from all, from what I can remember. And really they didn't, that, that arc in of itself didn't help much with the narrative from what I can remember. I think it kind of helped him realize that he had Quincy abilities in him or something like that. Is that remember. what that was about? Or helped him get his that. bond card back? I don't think they ever really defined his powers. Chad? Well, oh, are we talking about Ichigo or Chad? No, no, I'm talking about Ichigo. No, now. yeah, it was just like, getting his soul reaper even, powers back for the most part. Yeah, it was just such a weird. It was just such a, a roundabout way to just get his Bankai back, which was so annoying because it it had potential and it. I was already starting to get annoyed with like how the last arc ended, uh, with Ichigo losing his Bankai in the first place, and. Other weird things like Wonder Weiss. Uh, but um, I think Wonder Weiss was before that. It sure was. Way before that. That's what I'm but I'm saying like I was already starting to feel a way about Bleach, mm. but that full bringer arc and the nothingness that it brought to the um to the Quincy arc after uh just uh it, it left me so sour and I was so disappointed because Chad was one of my favorite characters. I like that he had a shield. I was, man. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember being fourteen years old, and and, and, and they went into Hueco Mundo, and he fought that nigga with two arms instead of just one. <laughs> do y'all remember that? I do remember that. He said, oh, yeah. "This one is the one hit or quitter, bro. <laughs> if I touch you with this one, you're dead." You're I'm dead. To be honest, I don't. We could have kept about... it that way and made it so that it was mad hard for him to actually hit niggas, but when he finally gets that hidden. You know what I'm saying? No, they couldn't even give him that. What happened? I, what happened really in the very next fight? What happened Bleach. right after he smoked that nigga? He lost again? I don't remember. Yeah. It, well, it, it did was... happened again in the full bringer? He, he, did, he lost immediately. This was when... They, no, this was um in Hueco Mundo. Mm. Yeah, he did lose and immediately. Just, you know, he, he stacked so many L's. And in this in this full bringer arc, he was supposed to be that nigga, yo. This was supposed to finally be about him. So yeah, man, super disappointed there. Uh, I thought of one more. I actually thought of this like earlier today, and I just forgot to mention it. But um, Kaguya from Naruto, I would have uh, not gone with that. But I mean, I, I don't understand. think there's one person that enjoys it. I mean, I, think I know it makes a lot more sense now. Well, but... you know, he retroactively mm. went back and changed his entire lore to match this. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I know it kind of like eliminates the central villains of Boruto, but at the same time, when Kaguya came out of nowhere, I was like, "What the fuck?" I think like it was. It's even known that Kishimoto had to create Kaguya out of an editorial mandate. What does that mean? Because he didn't mean like Madara was supposed to be the final villain. Okay. Like that in his mind, that was the final villain, and for some okay. reason, I f I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but maybe the, I I heard out there in the grapevine that Kaguya came out out as like an editor suggestion that like Kishimoto come up with an even bigger bad than Madara, even though he's been building up Madara as the main villain for pretty much half the series. Um, you know what that sounds like to me? What? Sounds like 
an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> is is it just a cope? By people with sounds, agendas? It sounds like a cope. By people with agendas? Sounds like sounds like sounds like excuses. Hey, I mean, you know, I'm not here to excuse it. I I brought it up. Uh, I did not love the Kaguya thing, and I don't think I don't think most people did. It's cool that he was able to like retcon it, so it makes sense for Boruto. But I didn't. I I, I thought it was just like unnecessary, because you know Madara was already big enough of a threat. I thought so. We didn't. We didn't have to introduce aliens into this. Who knows? Maybe Kaguya could have been an, a villain in Boruto instead. Yeah, I mean, sure. If you wanted to bring up Kaguya in Boruto, I think I would have been a little more accepting of it because, you know, it's it's detached from what we know. It didn't feel like it came out of nowhere. It would have felt like, oh, well, you know, Ka- Kishimoto started this new series with Kaguya in mind. You know, he didn't just spring it on us. With no build up whatsoever. Fair. But you want to hear my shout? Oh, what's your shout? So remember a long time ago in my hero when I brought up the idea of um there being a Tartarus arc where all my Quirkless had to survive in Tartarus with uh and Stain was like kind of protecting him from villains. Mm-hmm. Good times, good times. I would want that. <laughs> I would want that. I think they glossed over the fact that, um, that All Might went to Tartarus at like just before, like they. It was just a missed opportunity. If they had done something with All Might making a visit to Tartarus right before like the whole like before Tartarus went to shit I think that would have been such a sick arc to have All Might and Stain working together to like to survive and escape Tartarus that would have been such a good fucking arc you have no idea (laughs) I have a little bit of an idea but unfortunately, that did not happen. But that that would be one big change. Because like when it comes to manga, I don't really think there are many manga that have me thinking about um like what could have been different or what could have been better than My Hero. My Hero, I feel like, inspires those kind of thoughts a lot more often. For me, at least. Yeah. But that's the change that I would do. Nice. Well, I think that's it then, right? Does uh anybody have any last minute ones? No. All righty. Well, well, that being said, that has been our question corner for the week. Uh, email us at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com with anything more. And uh, with that, that has been our show. Thank you guys so much for listening. As per usual, you could find me at the Chris Espinal on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Brian at b.esp on Twitter and Instagram and twitch.tv slash it's punchline uh, Josh at JD Cole underscore 37 on Instagram and at New Jump City Josh on Twitter uh, you can follow the show itself at New Jump City on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok uh, email us at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com with any questions suggestions anything you guys want us to talk about and uh, yeah we'll, we'll talk about it on the show Well, when we, have, when we don't have probably like six series to cover the same day um so do that up or uh if you don't want to email you can comment under the video version of the podcast that we put out there's no like actual motion uh video going on there but we are uploading the uh full episodes up on youtube as well now so go for it and subscribe like share uh do all the things if you like the podcast uh to help us uh gain a better uh bigger audience that would be super cool uh, and we do the really good chapter of the week poll on that on our YouTube channel uh, every Sunday after the chapters drop on Viz's official uh, Shonen Jump app. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eyes peeled and uh, vote for your favorite series and we'll announce it on the show. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, we're on uh, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you prefer, 
uh, audio podcasts anyway. So do all that. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, stay safe, New Job citizens. Peace. Peace out, guys. Let's hope the Knicks get the next one. Yeah, go Knicks. Please.